cards, Pog Champ, new cards, Pog Champ. It's your boy Joseph Rothschild. We're looking at new cards. We're pogging. We're champing. Let's see what we got. First up, let's play one last game with the true king of games, Danny Guadalupe. Lead, lead, lead. Okay, hear me out. What if we made Yugi's deck from the end of the original se from end of original series work as a coherent strategy? The pack cover is brand new Gandora. So we've kind of been looking for a Gandora forever that doesn't break the game. Uh, half the Gandoras are FTKs and the other half are unplayable garbage in everything but Junior Journey. And let's see what we're working with. If you control Gold Sarcophagus of Light, okay, that's an, let's actually just go straight to Gold Sarcophagus of Light. I guess let's go to the comments. You can only use the second and third effect of this card's name once per turn. Can it be destroyed by monster effects? During your main phase, add a card from your deck to your hand that mentions Gold Sarcophagus as of Light. Okay, this is the shout-out effect. And then if your opponent specials a monster from the graveyard, discard a spell, target one of those monsters, send it to the graveyard. Like in my favorite anime, Yu-Gi-Oh! Alright. Gias Gandora, the Dragon of Destruction. What does Gias mean? Gias, I feel, is frequently showing up in Yu-Gi-Oh. Is it like a Japanese word that means cool? Because wasn't drag Dragias originally? Dragias, you know, G-E-A-S. What does Gias mean? Code Gias? What does the Gias in Code Gias mean? It is Japanese for Gyat. Okay. Gyat Gandora, the dragon of Dumpy. If you control Gold Sark, special this from your hand. Okay, good first start. Gains 300 for each banished card. Oh, it's like shitty <laughs> um, uh, Grand Maju de Iza. You can pay half your life points. Destroy as many other cards on the field as possible. That's the Gandora effect. Banish them. Then special summon one level 7 or lower monster from your deck that mentions Gold Sark of Light and increase its level by the number of cards destroyed by this effect. This card's cool. This card's really cool. It's very strong. Um... I guess it just, <laughs> the important part is, will it be playable with these other cards? It's like the finisher. That's something. Next up. Silent Swordsman Zero. Once per turn during standby phase, increase this card's level by one. All right, that sucks. Um, I imagine that the reason that uh, Gias Gandora increases levels is so you don't ever have to fuck with waiting on these cards. While this card's current level is higher than its original level, it gains attack equal to the difference times 500. Oh, you summon this guy and you OTK with Gias Gandora. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets Gold Sarcophagus of Light, you can gate the activation and increase this card's level by one. Sure. Next up, Silent Magician Zero. When your opponent draws a card, increase this card's level by the number drawn. That's funny. While this card's current level is higher than its original level, it gains attack equal to the difference times five. And when your opponent activates a spell card or effect and you control light, negate the activation and increase this card's level by one. Tricolore Gadget. These are all three gadgets on one card. And they have worse stats than green. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a Sark or a spell trap that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Banger Oomphy. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, set a stronghold, the hidden fortress, directly from your deck. Marshy Marshmallon. Oh, he's got the glasses! Oh, that's so cute. During your opponent's turn, if you control Gold Sark of Light, special this card from your hand. While you control Gold Sark of Light, it can't be destroyed by battle. Your opponent's monsters can't target other monsters for attacks. If it's destroyed by a card effect, summon another Marsh. Marshy Marshmallon that is banished during your hand deck or graveyard and inflict a thousand damage to your opponent. This is cool. It's a combination of Marshmallon and Marsh Macaron and Dupe Frog. That's really adorable. Well, I and Glasses, I guess, is not and Dupe Frog. So it's Marshmallon, Marshmallon Glasses, and Marsh Macaron all in the same card. Cute. Uh, we read this. Silence of time. Turn silence. Slash. Turn silence. <laughs> Okay. Target a face of monster control. Increase its level by three. If you activated this card in response to your opponent's monster effect while you controlled light, negate that effect. Okay. If your monster that mentions Gold Sark of Light battles, you can banish this card from your graveyard and the battle phase. Cool. This I've seen a million times on Twitter. It's a reference to the Kazuki Takahashi art above. If you control Gold Sark of Light and a monster that mentions it, special two level four lower monsters with different names from your hand or deck that mention Gold Sark of Light. And silence towards the future. 
Add a monster from your deck to your hand that mentions Gold Sark of Light. Then if you activated this card during the battle phase while well, you controlled Gold Sark of Light and a monster that mentions it, each player draws until they have six. Woo. Okay. And finally, Stronghold the Hidden Fortress. Uh, special summon this card is an effect monster, uh, just the same as Moving Fortress. Gains a thousand for each card you control that is Sark of Light or monsters that mention it. And when an opponent's monster declares an attack and you control Gold Sark of Light, destroy that monster. Okay. So, um, these cards aren't great. They're not fantastic. Uh, but they don't need to be fantastic. You know, they're iconic. Um, notably, I think the goal is... What you're supposed to do is find access to um, Gias Gandora via, like, Tricolor Gadget or uh, one of these fucking cards. And then special summon it and banish your opponent's field and summon Silent Swordsman Zero and OTK. And, like, everything else is cake, right? Like, um, Silence Towards the Future increases the attack of the Magician. If your opponent has, like, spells you have to worry about, you know, turn Silence gives you like a, a battle fader on turn one that gets you to a turn two position where you can OTK. Uh, Ties of Friendship is literally just a one card uh, set up for the entire line. Um, but, you know, it's pretty telegraphed. If you get rid of the gold sarcophagus of light, then you win the game immediately. Um, it doesn't seem consistent enough to be part of like a tier one strategy. Um, I'm willing to be wrong on this, but, uh, I feel confident that, like, you can negate the Gias Gandora is probably enough to prevent this from being remotely playable. Exordio video? Yeah, let's give it a sec. I'm gonna check the Lost Games real quick. Simo! Yeah, this looks terrible. However, it can probably still be BS. Ah. Your nose is mine. Well, we found the, the deck that loses to it. Um, I do like, uh, here's how you can tell that it's not a very good deck. Exordio has labeled it tier fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Next up. Yo, dog, we heard you like speculation. So we put speculation on yo speculation so you can speculate while you speculate. <sighs> Meme format used incorrectly. It's not X in your X so you can X while you XX. It's X in your Y so you can X while you X. These people, they're Philistines. You know, they don't understand the art of going to imageflip.com and Googling exhibit. Whatever happened to exhibit, by the way? Is he dead? Did anyone ever realize that his hairstyle in this picture is terrible? It's all coming out from, like, this point in the middle of his head. Looks like a sun. Terrible. He pimped too many rides. Wasn't his show fake? Nah, I mean, if you watched that show and thought it was real, I think you probably are very stupid. But, yeah, if I remember correctly, it was like they would put all these expensive electronics in the car, and then they would take it out, them out and give them the car. Um... And almost everyone who got their ride pimped sold it for salvage because, like, no one wants the car. They wouldn't fix any of the internals, so it still ran like shit. Um, but it was pretty low stakes. It was always someone with a beater would show up with this terrible-ass car, and they would put a PlayStation in it, and they'd go, Wow, a PlayStation! I mean, that's fun, you know, just to be on TV. And you know what do you what do you lose out of the ordeal? Like a fifty dollar car. One of those reality shows back when it was like, oh yeah, the whole premise is fake, and you could just do that. Yeah, they bought new beaters too. 
Well, I imagine what happened was for the money that they would get from selling it for parts or hawking the PlayStation or subwoofers from inside it, they would just get a different shitty car, but one that was maybe slightly better than the existing car. Oh, wait, Chad is saying, in fact, frequently they would just pimp out an entirely different but similar looking car because frequently the cars were just beyond repair. All right, back to Yu-Gi-Oh. This article image is a joke to a card's name. Five different cards in total, all come in normal parallel, available at Jump Festa for participating in events. Mira and Maknoko. Matchnoko. <clears throat> you can only use the first and second effects of this card's name once per turn. If this card is in your hand, reveal three cards from your hand or deck with the same name as cards in your opponent's graveyard, but different names from each other. And special summon this card. When your opponent activates a card or effect, send this card summoned by the first effect to the graveyard. Send a card with the same name as the opponent's card from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard and negate the activation. So it's cross out designator, but just for the mirror. Uh, th this card's not very good, uh, but it's funny. It's like the dumb mirror breaker. That's very funny. A speculation. Alien support? Uh, one monster with 2,500 or more attack. One face down defense position monster with 2,500 or less defense. This card gains effects based on its battle position. Attack gains attack equal to the highest original attack among monsters your opponent controls. Defense can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Tribute an attack position monster and a face down defense position monster to summon this card from your grave. This card's fun. Not very good, uh, but fun. Man, remember when this is like a wicked god style effect we would have to jump through hoops for and now you can just put it on a shitty fusion and it will see no play? Next up. Uh, I just like her. Is this the Diabell Star number two? Bandiva, the Ballistic Battle Ballad. This is Rush? What? That's fucked up. Rush gets designs like this? Do you think it's still Diabell Star? And she like snuck into Rush? MBT seeing his second woman covering half of her face. This is giving me real Dia Bell Star vibes. Next up. Creation Pack 3 and Phantom Nightmare. Uh, this is just some information. Uh, I don't care about this. Next up. The Big Bada Boom. Entrance for the Goblins. And you can see a lot going on here. First of all, El Goblino in the background. Here's Dia Bell Star trying not to look at it and her little freak looking at it. Uh, Goblin Biker Grand Entrance. Add a Goblino uh, from your deck to your hand. Then you can apply the following effect. Detach an Xyz monster from a monster on the field. And if you do, special summon a level 4 or lower Goblino from your hand. Banish this card from your graveyard. Then attach, detach an Xyz from a monster on the field. Add a Goblino from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this card's crazy. Obviously, just like Rhoda is good uh but uh card's crazy next up season's greetings from the destroyer of worlds all right so i guess we're just doing this now synchro universe zark so like what does this mean isn't Zark the embodiment of all five universes? So why are we getting each one? But if we get each one and then we get Rainbow Zark at the end, then I'll be happy about it, okay? So that's the bar. How do you Zark? Synchro Universe. All right, what are we working with? You can tribute one Supreme King Dragon or Supreme King Gate Pendulum Monster special summon this card, sure. Uh, this card's name becomes Supreme King Zark while on the field. After damage calculation, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle or inflicts battle damage to them, special summon up to two Supreme King Dragon monsters from your deck, extra deck, or graveyard in defense position. And if this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can place it in your pendulum zone. This is regrettably not very good. I wish it was great, but... um. The th you know the thing that's keeping this card back? Count along with me, chat. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to make it with three monsters, and I don't want to do that. Now, you can... Yeah, Jaxel is correct. The reason that this card is important is because... Arc Ray Dragon, uh, as mentioned in the Curry Bandits video, um, comes out in a point in the combo that makes no fucking sense. It's like you make Arc Ray after you already have access to everything you would want to search off of Arc Ray. Theoretically, you can make this one earlier and then like convert to Arc Ray and get a powerful Pendulum card. But I uh, still don't think that it's going to warrant a slot, especially in a deck that's already got... A pretty tight extra because it's playing all these cards that you are occasionally summoning. Um, but neat. Neat nonetheless. <clears throat> Next up. Code of Soul. This is the gay sex card between Playmaker and, uh, and Soul Burner. If you control a Link monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. It is just a Crusadia. During your main phase, if you Link summon a Salaman Great, you can use a Salaman Great Link monster with the same name as the entire material. That's right. It's also Sanctuary. And during your opponent's main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, Link summon a Link 3 or higher Cybers monster. This seems all right. It's a little hard to get a handle on if it's actually good or not. In Salaman Great, uh, you can theoretically use it to go into... Uh, the Link 3 Heat Leo at any time, which, like, shuffles a back row. That's cool. Um, if you end on, like, a hard-made Pyro Phoenix, I think you can Reincarnation Link using the Pyro Phoenix as a Pyro Phoenix if you've got a Sanctuary on field, and then it's, like, a quick effect nuke. Um, it's an extender. It's just a level 3 extender, which is already pretty good for that deck. Uh, but... I, you know, I would say the most important part of this card is that it proves that, uh, that love is love and that gay sex is real, right? Yeah, that's all I really have to say about the new cards. 